rack, they appear in the library ready for use. Six Sigma Rack provides a small test environment for you to test out different rack designs quickly and easily. The default project starts with a 3x3 three three meter chamber with a single floor grill. This is adequate for our purpose here. First, let's look at the server racks. This is our generic 4 kilowatt rack that currently populates our virtual facility. We can prescribe a flow rate to the grill in front of the rack and then perform a quick simulation to see how the rack performs. The solver that comes bundled with the rack module is designed to work swiftly on these small cases. This allows you to quickly test rack configurations, blanking options and so on, without having to wait for a full room to solve. The solution time of any case depends on the model's size and level of detail. Using a temperature plane throughout the room, we can look at the profile of the air leaving this server. Because the 4 kilowatt load is spread over the full height of the cabinet, we get a fairly gentle flow from the back and see temperatures of about 30 degrees. Now let's start comparing our standard generic cabinet with some more realistic configurations. High density racks are usually rated up to 8 kilowatts, so let's up the cabinet power to match. When increasing the power, Six Sigma will automatically increase the flow rate throughout the generic server. In high density racks, the equipment only ever fills the bottom half of the cabinet, so we can reflect this in the size of our generic server. We can see straight away the difference in the air leaving the rear of the cabinet, but we can quickly compare this side by side with the original generic cabinet. Using the compare window, we can look at the two models side by side. We can see that our high density rack has much more of a jet leaving the rear as well as more air leaving the vents at the top. Now let's create some medium density server cabinets. Again, we'll use the generic cabinet as a base. Again, from experience, we may know that the server racks are generally filled by a particular kind of server. Six Sigma DC software allows you to link the generic cabinet to a library item, filling the cabinet with the correct number of servers to match the power assigned to that cabinet. If we choose a server from the library, for example an HP ProLiant DL380G4, the generic heat load has been replaced by a number of DL380s to match as closely as possible the 4 kilowatt that we've specified. If we change the power, the number of servers will change automatically to make up the power specified. Most server cabinets always have the first 5U left empty. We can easily change the start position of these servers to reflect this. 4 kilowatts is about right for our server cabinets. Again, we see a marked difference between the original generic heat load and our more accurate model. The last thing we're going to investigate in Six Sigma Rack is our communications cabinets. This is the model of the comms cabinet we have at the moment, with the generic front-to-back server. The blanking separates the hot and cold air completely, and the model shows us that this cabinet works well.
However, let's imagine that we know that in this particular installation, we'll be using Cisco 6509s for the switching. So let's replace our generic server with items from the Six Sigma library. Notice that there's now some empty space. We can fill this by telling the software to automatically fill any empty mounting rail positions with blanking. Now the cabinet is fully blanked, it will adapt intelligently as equipment is added, removed or moved. The Cisco switches have more complicated airflow requirements than most servers. If we look at one more closely, we can see that it has two flow paths, one front to back for the power supplies and one right to left to cool the line cards. The switches are already very different to our original front to back cool generic server model, so we need to make some slight adjustments to the cabinet as the current blanking prevents cold air from reaching the inlet for the line cards. Six Sigma can automatically blank the gaps between the mounting rail and the front of the cabinet, but we don't want this right now. Colouring the switches by the maximum temperature at the inlets shows us that both units are running hot. We can use streamline plots to diagnose the cause of this. The outlet air is recirculating into inlets, causing the high temperatures. We can use rack to investigate various blanking options to solve this. Let's try blanking the front left and the back right to try to separate the hot and cold air. We can carry on in similar fashion to create something like this. Now the switches both have maximum inlet temperatures of no more than 20 degrees. Much better.